Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Another night of real world action here on the National Racing Network. My name is Chris Graham. I am completely jacked up to be bringing you this one here tonight. It is going to be a fantastic show. The Spec Corvette Series running their final doubleheader of the season, and it's coming to you live from Chukwala Valley Raceway out in California. As I mentioned, my name is Chris Graham. One of the stars of the series, Josh Carroll, unfortunately not able to participate this weekend, but that means he's hanging out with me here in the booth doing some color commentary. Josh, I tell you what, we have a lot of storylines to talk about in this race. A lot has gone on since we were last on the air a couple of months ago. Uh, and one of the biggest ones that, quite frankly, we can't ignore right now is the points championship. Yeah, it's going hard right now, uh, especially if you get back into that that third through seventh spot. You know, it's it's anybody's game. This is a double points weekend. Uh, so a lot a lot can happen. Certainly, you got me sitting in that number three spot, and, and I'm going to be dropping like a stone as they go through uh, the race format here, you know, typically as we're running with speed ventures, like we are this weekend, uh, it's a four race weekend. So we do uh, a series of two different super sprints on each day, uh, which, which we'll see kind of take place here. It's kind of a fun one to watch. So, uh, we'll see a lot of movement here in the series and it truly is anyone's, anyone's race. Yeah. That, that battle from third through about seventh in the point standing separated by eight points after almost 12 months of racing. Uh, it is absolutely wild, but there's a lot of other uh, kind of storylines that we have to look at. One of which is the results of qualifications. Oli Thorderson set a one minute 56.429, about four tenths of a second up on David Holmes and the car failed tech. How far exactly was Oli underweight? Well, from what I'm hearing, he was about 50 pounds underweight. <laughs> so this is a new build for him that he's been working on. He's been driving his, his white car previously, and he's had that pretty dialed in. It's a coupe, right, with the big glass the glass window on the back. This new build is a Z, um, so it's, a, it's just a lighter car. And uh, unfortunately for him, he didn't get a weigh-in done before he ran out there. He was thinking he was going to be safely overweight. Uh, but not the case with this new build, unfortunately. Uh, yes, but that means that Oli will be starting this one shotgun on the field, 17th on the grid tonight. Field is getting ready to start rolling out onto the racetrack. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about this place, uh, and we'll kind of bring the big graphic back up here again. You kind of have a kink into turn one, and then it is just fast and flowing it is probably the two words I would use to describe Chuck Walla Valley Raceway. It is. It's a bizarre surface too. You know, it's out there in the desert. You got a lot of sand all around you. Um, so the, the track is probably the, the most slippery surface of anything that we race on. So, um, you know, as, as far as handling and things like that, it's a completely different game once you get out to Chuck Walla. That's a great point. And quite frankly, I would imagine something that is a little bit different to try to set the car up for as well, because you kind of get used to, and I guess if you run a lot in Southern California, you get some of the, a lot of these kind of desert type circuits, but the, when the more you run out there, you kind of get a feel for what the car should feel like in terms of setup. So anything like a grip change uh, in terms of the track surface, that really makes a huge difference to these guys. No doubt. Uh, certainly the first in my first series of races out at Chuck Walla, I'd go out there making some suspension changes, thinking I had the hot setup and I was just dead wrong. You know, so it's it is what you think works at a typical racetrack does not work at Chuck Walla. Uh, well, let's take a look here. We'll bring the graphics out of the way and we'll tell you who we're going to go riding on board with today. The first camera view you have is looking out the front of John Wynn guy who's up inside the top of the field in points uh the next one we'll pick up here we'll take a look or move over with john simon who's going to be rolling out towards the middle of the grid here uh simon going to be rolling off outside or inside of row or yeah hold on i have to move everybody one inside of row number four in position number seven kevin jones also going to be one of those guys out on the racetrack here. Uh, Jones lining up 16th on the field. Taking a look, who else we have cameras on? And 
one of the, the interesting things to me about trying to produce these shows is the fact that you just never know who you're going to have at any one moment. Cell phone connections can get weird. However, they also will pop back in and out. Like in this case, we have Patrick Howe's uh, camera here on the uh, available to us, and the audio may drop a little bit. The picture may drop once in a while, but we, we, we um, I'll say we do our best here on this one as the field is out, and they are going to get doubled up here and you mentioned this is the super sprint format so talk to the tell us the viewers a little bit about what they're going to see in terms of what that actually means for these guys well kind of the cool thing about the way they do the super sprints is in this first race uh you'll go out there and you'll run i think generally it's four sometimes five uh laps i i wasn't uh, privy to what happened or what the call out was in the in the driver's meeting today but you've basically got, say, four laps to get it done. And then uh, what they'll do is they'll go out and they'll do a reset out on track. So you don't come in, but you'll uh, they'll, they'll designate where on track you're going to go out and park. And then we'll reset the grid. I don't know today uh, if, they're, if they're going to do a reverse grid. I Probably not. Uh, we haven't been doing as many of those lately. But uh, if you do a reverse grid, then we just flip the order out there and, and start it up. But more likely today what they'll do is... They'll just continue with whatever the finishing order is, and we'll have another super sprint for the second race, which will probably be a little bit longer depending on any on-track incidents and whatnot, but uh, probably in the neighborhood of a, of a five-lapper. Well, yeah, so we're getting ready. As soon as we see timing and scoring, we will get those graphics up on the screen for you, but we can uh, run through your starting grid for this one Uh here this evening, David Holmes and Mark LaCourt going to make up row number one. Daniel Sepulveda and John Wynn on row two. Evan Gold, Donnie York, row three. John Simon and Norman Hamden on row number four. Patrick Howe and Greg Nestor on row five. A little bit of a surprise to see Greg back there uh, on the outside of the fifth row. AP Miranda and Robert Hall on row number six. Row seven will be Kevin Missing and Clint Pichon. Kevin Jones, Jeff Herbert on row eight. And as we mentioned, starting shotgun on the field will be Ole Thorderson. Field is doubled up. And quite frankly, actually looking out the front of uh, Patrick Howe's car here, looking fairly tidy as well. We'll slide over. It's going to be a fun one on the start, too. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, oh, standing start. I believe the last time we did a standing start, we had a bit of a mess, if I remember correctly. Oh, we can, you can smoke those tires, especially at Chuckwalla, if you if you don't know what you're doing. So it, it could be a smoky, you know, America type of start here. Already seeing some tires smoke into the first quarter. Oh, my goodness. The scream out of these motors is absolutely fantastic. So continuing to ride on board here with Robert Howe. Man, good battle just up ahead here. Seeing the 46 of John Simon. We can go on board with John as well. Oh, looks, looks like, like they're keeping it nice and tidy out there. Yeah, clean. However, the 155, I think that is, looked like he was a, a little bit sideways. Oh, man. Got to cut to this view, though. Out of house car. They are straight up fist fighting out here on Chuck Walla. Oh, hold on to it. Wow, what a save, Patrick. I'll tell you what, that sun glare is something else that these guys really have to be concerned with. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this you, time of day, you got to watch for it and the dust clouds, too. Not quite as bad as Button Willow, but they can get big out there. I, what is that like to drive through? I mean, that has to be... I'm unnerving at best possibly it's straight up days of thunder yeah you just kind of <laughs> try not to slow down too much so you don't get hit from behind and uh, try not to drive through it too too hard because there might be somebody sitting there you never know So 
on board now with Patrick Howe will slide up a little bit. Well, actually, I guess a little bit back through the field technically. Pick up Kevin Jones. And one of my favorite things that, about listening to these cars, Josh, is everybody's kind of running their own race. You, you have your own individual battles that you get to have. It's not necessarily about a P1. It's about beating the guys you're going to be close to on skill level as well. Yeah, it's nice the way it breaks out, especially when you get into these fields of the size. I don't know if we got out there today, 15 cars, I think, on track. You know, there's there's generally going to be a battle everywhere in the pack. So you got a, you know, a few that are going to be fighting up front. Nice mid-pack battle. And even for the guys that are kind of hanging towards the back that aren't quite as comfortable yet, they, they can uh, they can really give each other hell. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's just awesome for everybody, no matter where you're at. And one of the things that really comes into play with that is the nature of this being a spec series in a, a lot of respects. Very minimal changes are allowed to be made. Uh, you're kind of, you live within the constraints of the C5 platform. Yeah, not much to be done, which is great. You know, I, I come from GT2, GT3, e-production, super touring, things like that, where you're you're pretty much wide open. And man, you can spend a fortune and a lifetime trying to dial those cars in to, to squeak out an extra half a second. So these, it's a little more set it, forget it. There's some variability in the, the tuning on the suspension and things like that. But, but otherwise, um, it's just, it's mostly plug and play. You can get out there and be fast pretty much from the get go. And, and the guys are pretty good about sharing specs and things like that. So uh, it's more about it's more about the driver than it is about the car. Uh, that's a great point. And actually, we got to make sure that we uh, say a big thank you to all of the uh, of the sponsors there. And you'll see them pop up on the bottom right hand corner of the screen: Penske Shocks, Willwood Brakes, Track Spec Motorsports, Turn One, uh, Nankang Tires, the presenting sponsor of the Spec Corvette Series. A lot of different folks really whether it's through contingency work uh a variety of things make this series as affordable as it is yeah which is great one of the nice things about setting up, or the way that we do the sponsorships here is is uh it's unlike a lot of others where all the contingencies go to the top uh, our sponsors are actually discounting products for everybody that's running so everybody gets a little bit of love no matter where you are in the field on board here with robert hall uh, currently running in the 14th position. He's back a couple of spots. Mark LaCourt grabbed the early lead. He's holding on to that over Daniel Sepulveda. Donnie York up one into the third position. Evan Gold fourth. Norman Hamden up into the fifth position. John Wynn falling back three spots. He runs in position number six. Yeah, it's a great showing for Daniel. It's uh, seeing him up there in the top three, not typical for him. So he's he's something about his setup or his knowledge of Chuck Wall is really working for him today. Uh, yeah, and I mean, we look at the numbers here. We're starting to see the, uh, the gaps start to come in. And everybody sort of spaces themselves out a little bit, kind of where they should be on outright pace. I, I would imagine, unless you're Ole Thorderson trying to charge your way through the field, it's kind of nice because you develop a a trust and a relationship with the drivers that you're you're running with and, and you kind of get a feel for who's around you and, and who you're used to driving with yeah that's true and uh, we got a few new drivers out here and uh, robert hall for example i don't think has driven with us before um so you got to keep an eye out for folks you're not familiar with yet but uh but for the most part everybody gets to know each other and and uh, we got to be friends when we come in for the barbecue at the end of the day. So <laughs> race hard, but not that hard. <laughs> uh, that, that's exactly right. Now, interesting story on Robert Hall's car here. This is the car that Ole Thorderson has put to the front many, many a time. So this it's not like it's a new car and driver combo. It's just a new butt in the seat, so to speak. And, and that car has a whole lot of pace in it. It does, yeah. Robert's got something to work with here. Ole's been consistently on the podium in national championships, um, so that that car is set up to move. It looks like we got a nice battle going too. Robert Hall's right on Kevin Jones, and kind of see 
who Kevin Jones is battling with up there. Is that looks like it might be John Simon? Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, actually. Let's see. I think gonna be Clint Pichon, maybe. I'm oh, it's, this- it's Clint. Yep, looks like he's getting the move on him. See if oh, he can man. hold that overtake. Looks like it. That might be one of my favorite things about these Corvettes. They are very sporty. They are very fast, but they are all American heavy iron. It is not like you're driving some little Mazda Miata or a, you know, Porsche BMW type of thing. It's a lot of work to drive these cars side by side through the corners like we're seeing. It can be, yes. And they're doing a good job keeping it clean. They were really hanging side by side through those, through those twisties. But it looks like Kevin made it stick. Uh, yeah, Kevin made it stick, and hopefully we get John's camera to pop back in here because just up ahead of John Wynn, Norman Hamden, Evan Gold, if we can get through the sunlight, we've basically got like a four-car train all the way up from Donnie York back through John Wynn. These guys are all pretty much nose to tail. Oh, that's killer. Good to see Donnie up there in the mix, too. He's, uh, he's such a great guy. He's uh, For those that don't know, he's a GM master mechanic, specializes in Corvettes. And that guy give you the shirt off his back. He's he's the first to be running around in the paddock helping people out when they're having troubles. Well, and it looks like the first of the super sprints may be done because the speedometer on the bottom right-hand corner of Robert Hall's car says about 69 miles an hour. Nice to do on the highway, not as quick as you want to be on the racetrack. So looks like <laughs> number one is done. And like you said, now we're going to kind of re-rack everybody and get ready for what amounts to a double point show for these guys within one, I guess it's a half hour window that everybody has out on the racetrack. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, two very quick races. You know, sometimes you get into those 30, 40 minute races, especially if you're doing well, you're just praying for it to end. You know, in this <laughs> one, it's more like you're praying for more time. It totally flips it on its head. Uh, yeah, it's the... Um, I guess to you're condensing down the size of the Daytona 24 sprint race for the IMSA guys versus the sprint race that they run at Long Beach. At Long Beach, you're fighting and fighting and fighting, and oh my God, it's over. Daytona, it seems like the end is never going to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one comes too fast sometimes, but it's a it's a fun one for a change of pace. So our race results out of race one, Mark LaCourt, Daniel Sepulveda, Donnie York, Evan Gold, Norman Hamden, your top five. A couple of new names up on the podium in this one. That is pretty darn spectacular. John Wynn's going to finish in the sixth position, followed by John Simon, A.P. Miranda, Greg Nestor, and Ole Thorderson. And it's going to be Kevin Missing, Clint Pichon, Kevin Jones, Robert Hall, and Jeff Herbert back in the 15th position so now you can see them they're starting let's take a look here we'll go back on board with john Wynn here they're doubled up towards the front and ready to go this i love how they do this everybody's in line just pick a good spot right near the start finish line stop them punch the loud pedal and let's go do it again <laughs> yeah it'll be an interesting one i think we'll roll back over to Start, finish, probably do another standing start uh, once everybody gets formatted. Uh, we didn't see much of it, but you can maybe see it out of the corner of uh, Robert Hall's view here. But uh, we're also out there with these uh, super spec Miatas. So basically two different uh, classes of cars out there on the track right now. Uh, yeah, and that's they do uh, as every race but one that we've seen this year. They've done a really nice job of you kind of keep everybody separated. So... The Miatas run their race, the Spec Corvettes run their race, and they don't ever really have to deal with each other a lot. Once this year, however, yeah, we bad. had some really mixed up classes, and it was like the the speed dynamic was really, really wild. Yeah, yeah. These Miatas are not your typical Spec Miata. They've got a bit of aero and whatnot, so they can they hold their speed a little bit better. Uh, so Chuck Walla in particular, with all these turns being a kind of a lower speed t- track just in general, uh, they tend to, those Miatas run a little bit faster, so uh, we don't see them quite as much. It, it'll still happen. You know, front runners will end up mixing up with each other, but for the most part, we're separated, which is nice. 
Uh, yes, and now I do have to say one of my favorite racing series that has ever run is Mustang versus Mini. Because the cars run, <laughs> they run almost similar lap time, basically similar lap times, but they make the speed in such completely different ways. The Minis are light and nimble through the corners. The Mustangs are just loud screamers down the straightaways. It, it makes it a fun watch. Oh, man. If you're somebody who just is into cars, it's not just the Corvettes or, or single class stuff. You can go out here, spend the day, enjoy the paddock, and, and really get to enjoy a pile of different kinds of race cars. Oh, yeah, it's cool. And, and this one, you know, this the one or two races a year that we do with Speed Ventures, we could do get to see a lot of different cars out there because this is prim primarily a track day organization uh, that that does a, a sanctioning for just this, this particular race group, which is kind of nice. So you see some pretty cool supercars out there. So getting on More than board. you would in a typical race going on board here with john simon for the restart how much different is it running these on hot tires versus doing the initial standing start on cold rubber it's a bit more slippery as you would imagine those tires even after a super sprint they're they're kind of we found their melting point you know so the second race is a little bit more dicey usually trying to keep the keep the car underneath you Oh my goodness, what a spectacular battle we're seeing out of the front of Simon. How about it? Let's slide over here and pick up John Wynn. Now, as soon as we flip over to him, of course, the camera's going to stop. But that can even vary just based on where the cell connection is. But it, its I would imagine it's kind of tough being behind the wheel of one of these cars because you want to push, you know how fast you can go, but at the same time, you kind of have to behave yourself too. Yeah, at the start, you know, nobody's going to win in the first turn. So it's it's pretty easy to go hog wild. I've been guilty of it uh, before, for sure. Uh, it's not if you're starting a little bit farther back and cars will check up more than they would typically check up uh, before they spread out a few laps in, you know. So it's it's easy to collect somebody. It looks like we're keeping it pretty clean here, although I see a dust cloud out there on the I track. I was just going to say, so see, put it, it seeing a dust cloud out the front of Robert Hall's machine. Looks like everybody's going to keep it clean. Oh, just it looks like Missig just put a nice pass on on Robert Hall. Hall gonna have the peak up the inside. Big deep dive into the corner. Put those oh, Willwood nice. brakes to use. We'll keep... Keeping it tucked in. Missig must still be out there. Now snatch he, it back here. Now oh. he's able, say, able to clear the pass. Nope. Oh. That's some more dust out there. Somebody else is dropping at least a couple wheels off. Wow, go jump on board here with Patrick Howe. Good battle going on here just up ahead of him. Yeah, it looks like that might be AP Miranda. I'm looking at it right. Uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. And also, I'm seeing this is a reverse grid as well. At least that's what just popped over timing and scoring. We'll get that one back up on the screen here for you. So you can follow along oh, with where your favorite is. I hope so. Those are those are some of my favorites. Uh, well, maybe not. Looks like everything just inverted again on the pylon. Uh, Mark LaCourt is the race leader by seven tenths of a second over Donnie York. Daniel Sepulveda holding on to the third position. Evan Gold, Norman Hamden, the top five. And Norm Hamden's out there working in a new race motor. So looks like it's doing well for him. Really want to see Patrick get up there and uh, and uh, give AP a hard time. <laughs> Looks like that must be Greg Nestor out in front of AP. Really giving it to him.
Another dust cloud. Another dust cloud? And I would imagine that's another loss of grip is something else that you kind of have to consider there because somebody, if you see dust, somebody's bringing something back onto the racing surface with them. Yeah, bringing that sand back. Contribute to that slippery chuckwalla. And you are significantly more well versed in the rule book than I am. Um, these are are these a DOT legal tire as well that these guys have to run? They are. That Nankang is a 200 treadwear DOT tire. Yep, just something you could run on your typical daily driver. But uh, I'll tell you what, they're quick. Uh, they're they're as grippy as what you would see in like a like some of the older 80 and 100 treadwear racing tires. Uh, so they'll they'll give it to it. We'll slide over here and pick up Robert Hall. He's trying to chase down. I believe it says Kevin Jones is what we're seeing on the timing and scoring monitor. Yeah, it looks like it. I see those blue racing stripes down the center. That one's good. This one might be better, though. Here, looking out the front of John Wynn's race car. He has the 46 of Simon just up ahead of him. Norm Hamden, Evan Gold, Donnie York are all there. I mean, this is your entire lead pack, all just kind of jacked up and jammed up jelly tight, so to speak. Well, that'll be a nice fight. We got a longer race this time around, too, so uh, we'll see what happens as this sorts out. And John Simon's gotten gotten a lot faster too. He was he was kind of a timid guy when he was just getting started. You can see he's still running his orange rookie plate, even though he's not really a rookie anymore. It's good to see him getting up there in the mix. Norm's a bit of a veteran too. He's uh, he knows his way around a racetrack. So to see John up there giving Norm hell, that uh, that must feel good. And you can get a look. You can see the bottom left corner. You can watch John's hands, but you can also, if you look in the upper right, you kind of get a decent view of most of John. It's when these things decide they want to break loose, the reactions have to be so incredibly quick to keep that car pointed in in the direction that you're hoping for there you see a little bit of it little off throttle oversteer oh man just so much glare you're driving into there as well oh yeah that's got to be hard to see Well, something that I don't think we're getting enough justice out of these guys. We're going to very quickly cut over here to Kevin Jones. Uh, because of where his camera's mounted, it gives you a fantastic idea of just how much elevation change there is. Yes, you're out in the middle of the desert, but this place is not board flat. There is as much up and down as there is left and right that these drivers are having to fight. Yeah, there is a decent amount of up and down. And in this, it looks like we're running counterclockwise, which is uh, opposite of what you're what you're used to out there, which I guess Speed Ventures likes to do that about, you know, once or twice a year. And so they're hitting some of these elevation changes from the opposite angle. So even the veterans, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit new for them. <laughs> even if you've done it a couple times before, you don't get a lot of frequency. Wow, John Wynn with just fistfuls of steering wheel there keeping the car in a straight line my goodness don's a master of the drift so he can he can get that thing about as sideways as anybody and and manage to recover it it's kind of amazing so we are working at lap number three here uh trying to keep an eye out even just looking for the flag post to see if we see a white flag uh, anywhere the only alert we'll get out of timing and scoring is when the session goes checkered other than that, I would tend to think, though, we're only about 10 minutes into this one. Probably have another two to three laps, I would think. That sounds about right to me, yeah. There. 
coming through the bowl right there. That's another combination of elevation and nice camber in that bowl. Yeah, that's about how you carry a ton of speed. Oh my goodness, man. I, I love watching John Wynn's hands because he really is just all over the place. And you have time. One of these days, we're going to get him to tighten up that mirror, too, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, you're doing 120 mile an hour, and you have the opportunity to adjust your mirror. Ooh, one of these days, I'll bring off, a wrench to the track. One the off the racetrack. Oh, no. Ah. Wow. Oh, I thought we were headed for contact. It looks like oh, everybody's nice able recovery. to save it. Nice save, Norm Hamden. Oh, but a big dive. My goodness, that was Ole oh, Thorderson. A... Yep, Ole coming from behind. Moving through the pack. Taking advantage of John having to slow up just a little bit because you have a car off the racetrack. Oh, man, that sounded like a bunch of sand on out of somebody's car here. That may have been Kevin Jones. Uh, but it, you... So somebody ahead of you gets off track you just have to slow up a little bit but what that means is that everybody that's chasing you down from behind now has the opportunity to take advantage yeah, it looks like norm's having a bit of a, a rough go with those tires he got a little sideways again there looks like Oli had to take evasive action and then john got his spot back best i can tell Trying to maximize the corner exit speed. He's really getting up there on those curbs. Sure, Ole's back there giving John hell. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we had a camera on Ole Thorderson that we lost right about as they rolled out onto the racetrack. Never a dull moment when it comes to camera production in these things, unfortunately. Uh, you know what? I, I tried to explain that we produce these shows entirely remotely and we have no views outside of the race car. And everybody in the business has told me you're crazy and it can't be done. We're proving it can be done here. And quite frankly, this is the, the fun of live television to me. Let's flip over here. We'll pick up Robert Hall. He is running in the 12th position, has Ole Thorderson and Kevin Jones just up ahead. And Ole not that far off the back uh, of John Simon. Uh, it looks like, uh, looks like John, maybe the car got the best of him. He had a little bit of a before off, it looked like. Trying to see who got around him there. It looks like it might have been Nestor. Uh, let's take a look. We can swing back over here, uh, and it would be Greg Nestor that got around John Wynn for position number six. Nestor trying to be the hard charger of the race. That would put him up four positions from where he started this race number two. Robert Hall also up three. Now, we see right in the middle of John's dashboard, you have your lap timer, and that just ticks up, and that's giving the drivers a live delta. Is that just incredibly frustrating to watch that number go up now? <laughs> yeah, no doubt you're not happy when you see a plus sign in a big uh, red background like that. Although it looks like, you know what? They're slowing down. I wonder, it looks like we may have hit the end of the race. I was going to say, we may have hit. We just passed 15 minutes. I can't believe a half hour has already gone by this quickly. Uh, but it looks like we'll see. We'll wait for the official update from timing and scoring here. And nothing is official until tech is complete. Uh, but it looks like Mark LaCourt picking up his second win of the day ahead of Daniel Sepulveda and Donnie York. They're going to swap spots in race number two, but put both of those guys up on the podium. Evan Gold and Norman Hamden will complete your top five. They're going to be followed home by Greg Nestor, John Wynn, AP Miranda, John Simon, and Kevin Jones. Robert Hall, Kevin Missig. Uh, let's see, Jeff Herbert and Clint Pichon 
And then it looks like actually possibly trouble for Ole Thorderson. He is being scored dead last on the session. So trouble for Ole at some point may have gotten the car off the racing surface. That's an interesting one then. I wonder if uh, when they had that bobble, if he ended up going four off or something. Hopefully he's all right. Uh, yeah, we'll have to check in and we'll get you the update on that one for race number three coming up here tomorrow. That one will air at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe that makes it 12 o'clock Pacific Time. That sounds about right. Good old, uh, or what are we, standard right. time, right? So uh, daylight racing time now. Uh, yes, that is exactly right. Um, now, I, I haven't yet seen the checkered fly yet, but I also haven't seen anything that says full course yellow either. So we'll see as everybody kind of starts to make their way in. If they make the right-hand turn onto pit lane, then we'll know that everybody is uh, – oh, well, there we go. We see John Simon giving the wave, and, yeah, it looks like everybody heading down pit lane. So – that's going to wrap things up here for day number one of Spec Corvette Racing at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway. Quite frankly, man, a, a fantastic place. Josh, I really appreciate you coming to hang out in the booth with me here. Um, so many sponsors that that we have to thank, and, and we'll get those up on the screen here as we get ready to wrap things up. But, um, man, Chuckwalla seems like it never disappoints in, in terms of – putting on great racing action. I mean, we had tri uh, trains of five, six spec Corvettes all battling hard for the entire half hour session. Yeah, it's a great, it's a really fun track to race on. The surface is wide, you know, while a bit slippery um, with lots of turns. So it just makes for tight racing, but plenty of places where you can go side by side safely without having to worry about hitting walls and whatnot. You know, really just that front straight's the only, only place where there's something to hit. So it's a, it's a fun one and a safe track to ride on too.